Welcome back, Midwest Brew Review. I'm Billy, this is Brian, this is Matt, and today we're drinking some Tiny Cans. So this is Tiny Can Bonanza. Tiny Can Bonanza! Yeah, man, this is a new trend. Uh, little eight ounce cans uh, popping up all over the Chicagoland area. We've managed to collect a whole bunch of them. Matt, uh, what do we got here today? Uh, right, the first one here is Little Buddy, Little Lager by Hopewell. And then we have something very interesting called the Over Under, which is Penrose, actually, I happen to be wearing their hat. Uh, Penrose Over Fruit Kettle Sour, and then Haze Down Under, which is their uh, NE IPA. And you pour them together. Totally crazy, awesome packaging idea, great marketing. You literally mix them together as you as you pour them into a glass. And then the uh, last one, St. Errant Brewing. Anomia? Anomia, we'll go with that. Anomia, let's go with Anomia. Uh, Imperial Stout with Coconut. So St. Errant, we noticed, had been doing this a lot lately, putting Imperial Stouts into eight ounce cans uh, because we talked to them, go check out our beer under glass video. You could drink one at home like on a Thursday as opposed to like have to have a 22 ounce bomber to share with everyone. So that's kind of our, our thought process behind it. Wake up without diabetes or a hangover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so let's go ahead and work our way through. We'll go light to dark and we'll tell you what we think. All right, this first one we're gonna do, Little Buddy. This is out of Hopewell Brewing Company. This is out of Chicago, Illinois. This is a lo uh, lager. Um, we're talking a uh, little lager. They call it a snack. It's um, They say a little less is more. This is a 4.7% uh, alcohol by volume. And of course, we're talking about an eight ounce tiny can. Lager it's in nice. a little can. It's interesting. All right, cheers. 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 It's a crisp lager, I yeah. like it. It's, it's clean. Yeah, sure. off the bat, man. A little, little floral on the nose. Uh -huh. It's very clean and crisp. Nice color, it definitely acts a part. It's a great beer. What do you think? I, I find it very delightful. It's actually very a crisp, like, um, you know, an everyday type of beer that you could just really get into. Um, I do have one small reservation about it, and that is, I wish it was a full can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it is 4.7, so we're talking about uh, like a lager, like a light beer-ish right. area. So the, the tiny can for, for this one confuses me a little bit just because I don't know if it plays in that area correctly or not. I think there's a novelty to it if you're going, you know, walking in the park or something where you're allowed to drink beer at that point, then this is kind of cool. And, and absolutely, this is not like the first time this is, you know, you know, these are little cans, but mm -hmm. this isn't the first time this has ever been done before. You know, if there's like malt liquor out there, mm -hmm. Little Kings, right. you know, Coors, Miller, mm -hmm. you know, they do have those small, small bottles. Right. And I know even like right. if you're getting like a Bloody Mary or you're doing that, those kind of things, you'll, they'll have the little side guy, you know, for a backer. Or there whatever. you go. Now, now we're talking. Mm -hmm. So like a, a, a little sidecar for a, a Bloody Mary. That's where I could see this playing. Like, um, but in itself, I think it's act the beer itself. I think it's uh, incredible. When, I want more of it. Yeah, right. Exactly. You just you just want to you, you know we should go the other way instead of eight. We just go like twenty eight. Exactly. <laughs> just keep growing the can higher. Exactly. But like yeah, you, the one thing I like about this beer is you know some lagers now they're just it's just it seems like it's all Pilsner malt and they're they're almost overly light for me. This one's got just the right touch character and I think that's why I really like it. It's not just super bland. If they put this in like a freaking uh, stovepipe can <laughs> yeah, yeah, all yeah. day, this is like on the spot realization about the Bloody Mary thing. I'm not even like, <laughs> usually we come into these things like a little bit prepared, what mm -hmm. we're gonna talk about, that just hit me. But like, I would definitely put yeah. this right next to a Bloody Mary and be yeah. happy. All right, so next up we have a pair of tiny cans and this is from Penrose out of Geneva, Illinois. And first up we have one called Overfruit and that's a kettle sour with blackberry and boysenberry, so that's pretty cool. And the other one is a haze down under, and that's uh, a New England. Uh, first off the bat, I said I thought these were gonna be a little lighter. <laughs> these, so the, the fruit one is seven point five percent. Yeah, and it's not sugar, probably, right? the, the haze down under is clocking in at eight point two. And I believe these are sold in a mixed four pack. There's even a little sticker on the top of the four pack that says mixed together. Yes. All right, so as you saw, Billy uh, uh, poured them as he should, mixing them together. Honestly, half of the fun of this beer is pouring them like this and trying to get them perfect and having them cross the streams like in Ghostbusters, right? So <laughs> uh, both of these beers, we went to Penrose a few weeks ago, both of these beers on their own are very good. 
and mixing them together made them, I think, better. So let's let's give them a little a little drink here. I had the overfruit by itself. I like it. It was very tart, mm -hmm. but I like that. Um, but I'll tell you, mixed together, they're very good. Oh. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's really good. It is. It's got that smooth kind of oh. milkshakey feel to it, but it also has that tartness of those berries as well. Yeah, it's almost like a, like a build your own milkshake IPA. Totally, right. Right. totally, totally, totally. I, I definitely like the innovation, and I'd be very interested to see you know what other breweries do with this in the future because I think this is actually a phenomenal idea. Mm -hmm. I think there's probably a lot of a lot of area to play with as far as like making a black and tan, but not. A black and tan. Maybe you make make a beer uh, chemistry-wise that sits on top of another right. one. You know that mm -hmm. right. we don't even know about yet. Something right. something like that. Well, awesome job, Penrose. Yes. We'd love to see a, uh, another version of this. Yeah. So feel I, free to send it our way. Yeah. You got a little marketing. You got a little gimmick. Right. But at the end of the day, it's all about what's in the can. And it's, I it's think it's this solid. is great. Right. Absolutely. All right. It's solid. awesome. Okay. Beer number four. We have Saint Laurent Anomia. If I'm saying that wrong, I'm sorry, but that's what we're going with. Uh, we have an Imperial style with coconut. This is Beguile. We love Beguile. They're out of Chicago. Uh, artwork by Hugo Trejo. We'll get a close up of that later. Uh, it's a cool ass like tiki guy. So it totally fits with the coconut. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to our fourth slash three and a half yeah. and final beer. Cheers to you at home. I get a ton of coconut off the nose actually. I get background coconut. I think it's pretty solid. Ooh, there it is. You, you go to these festivals, you stand in lines to get these huge beers. And it's like, you know, you're, you're doing the bolsters, which I'm all for. You beer is for sharing, for sure. But, like, sometimes when you, you just want to have a good beer, you know, on a weeknight, like, this is definitely, I feel like this is a good spot for this, you know, a baby, like, baby can, tiny can. Um, yeah, I think it's a great spot for this type of beer. Right, because what, what I run into is, you know, I'll get a, I'll get a lot of bombers and stouts, and, and they'll just sit because, you know, maybe I don't get together with everyone once in a while, and... The stouts just sit and you know you don't necessarily you want to share them their bombers are meant to share and you know this is something you can you know open by yourself yeah. and, then you, and then you got this one's this for is me. A, this is a four pack right this one's for me was. four yeah. pack yeah. yes a little me yes. time yeah i mean they could even amp up i love see i love coconuts they get amped yeah. up this is very rich and fudgy and chocolatey for sure mm -hmm. Uh, they can amp up the coconut just a touch more. I'd, I'd be in love with this beer for sure. But overall, it's super desserty and it's nice, rich beer. We, what is your take on tiny cans in general? Is it is the it, whole thing? Are you saying like are you thing. saying like is this here to stay? Right. Or, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I think after 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 doing this and like I originally wanted to say that little buddy, there's no room for that. Mm -hmm. But like. Now that I think about it, this could be a, a Bloody Mary Packer. Mm. Like, that's perfect. Mm. It's a it's a delightful beer. Um, I Like I said, I love the fact that we could do, like the innovate, brewers can innovate with doing like cuvées of a couple beers and you can really play with everything that you, you have going on at your brewery. Like, try this, try that, or you could have it on its own, you know? Um, and then obviously, I think that this, um, I think this is probably the most um, workable, thing for a tiny yeah. can as far as like big stouts um you know if you you like big stouts but you don't want to crack open that that huge bobber right. and you won't i mean who, you know you're not going to drink a freaking 12.9 percent you know huge bomber by yourself mm -hmm. so i think that's where this plays big time i think this is a great great uh, option for craft beer drinkers that you know you know, during the week, that kind of thing, after work, whatever. And with the price, it's kind of still the wild west with this kind of stuff. So check, check how much you're paying for it and see maybe. Yeah, keep an eye on it. Yeah, keep an eye. Bill, your thoughts? For me, you know, I think it comes down to um, what's in the can. I think if you're making a good product, you know, you could put it in a damn boot and I'd drink it <laughs> if it was good. I think the stout's the most sustainable idea. I think we might be leaning a little gimmicky over here. Like I, like I just said, I could use a taller lager and the pairing, this is so cool though. I'm a fan. Yeah, I, I think yeah. it's neat. But how many combos can you do? How often can you run that? You know, but I feel like this is the, a big stout and a little can is definitely the most sustainable idea. So we got uh, three thumbs up here, guys. We think, we think tiny cans are, are something that will, that will stay around. I think so for a while, I think yeah. so. for, for a good amount of time. Guys, remember it's just beer, but it's pretty damn good. 12.9%. So this is a hot one. Baby. It's hot. Get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel like uh, Matt was talking about this uh, in the beginning. 12.9%. Uh, 
point nine, right? I feel like Matt was talking about some beginning. Of <coughs> and we thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> it's a joke. I'm just.